Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, episode 178. This is our year in review and the second annual Zenmies, recorded on Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Yes, sir. As always, we are actually going to do a abbreviated show today. So we'll quickly announce some events. Uh, we've got our upcoming webinar, Zoho One Full Product Tutorial for 2022. Last year's uh, got over 20,000 views on YouTube, and they made a lot of changes to Zoho One <laughs> over the last year. So we're going to update that. And as always, if you want to know what's going on in the world of Zoho, head over to zanata.com slash events. And there we keep a full listing of everything you might want to know about what's going on. So just to head on over there. All right. And with that, uh, let's jump into hopefully an abbreviated version of the news. We will start with Zoho Analytics. Got its December 2021 updates. Um, talk to me, Tyler. This is one of your favorite applications. Yeah, so a couple of good ones to call out here. Um, Zia getting multi-language support. That seems like a common theme across a lot of different applications. So Zia within analytics can be used to quickly ask questions and kind of get answers back from your data without having to really create any specific charts or reports or kind of just generated for you. Um, that's now supporting Spanish as well as English. And I would assume they're going to keep building on that. Um, you've got more permission settings around your analytics portal. So if you were to set up a particular user group, you can now assign permissions based on a group rather than user by user, which is a huge quality of life benefit there. They've also rolled out some additional themes for building out slideshows. Um, that's kind of if you wanted to create a presentation directly from your analytics data, they've now got some pre-baked themes for you to use. Um, the next one here that's that's actually pretty slick is um, some additions to their Live Connect system. Um, so Live Connect is basically a way to connect Zoho Analytics to a standalone database. Um, they've now enabled Live Connect for MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server, and Oracle, as well as DB2. So a lot of those hugely used, you know, MySQL is ubiquitous across everything, right? So being able to connect to that is a huge, huge benefit here. With it kind analytics. of opens up the whole world right there, doesn't it? Yeah, That's and they've, they've always had it for, you know, your your common Amazon, you know, Redshift, RDS, you know, those things, as well as Microsoft Azure. But, you know, just the more the merrier here for if you've got a custom application sitting over in a SQL server, you can now get that connected. Um, they've also rolled out caching. Um, pretty slick. You know, you might see sometimes with a bigger dashboard with lots of different charts and reports, it might take just a second for everything to spin up and load. You can now let it cache. So if you were to look at that report kind of quickly over the course of an hour, a couple of times, it's going to load a lot faster. Um, last one's here, just a couple options around data syncs, pulling in some more metadata, um, you know, like when that sync happened and things like that into your data sources. So a nice roundup of updates there for Zoho Analytics just keeps getting uh, better and better. Better and better. It is a great app, and they've made a ton of improvements to it uh, this year. And so last week, we had the top 10 marketplace applications of 2021. By the way, we might want to call a little foul there, <laughs> because I think, was it three or four of those that were now Yeah, those Zoho Show, those Zoho Show plugins that auto-install themselves. So uh, Yes. So, when you, yeah. <laughs> so four of the top 10 applications are auto-installed when you turn on CRM. So uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but the fastest growing ones, we've got Mail Merge for Zoho Mail, uh, Twimoji for Zoho Show, uh, India Mart for uh, Zoho CRM, WhatsApp Hub, which I have not heard of for uh, Zoho CRM. It records all your messages received from your customers in WhatsApp. A lot of, um, and then What's Up, which is a WhatsApp and Instagram integration for Zoho CRM. Dropbox for Zoho Projects. Ddupe for Zoho CRM. Um, this looks pretty interesting. I might want to check this out because uh, Zoho has its own deduping engine. Um, but there could be some problems with that. So I'd be kind of curious to see what uh, what they've come up with there. Uh, Microsoft Exchange for Zoho CRM and integrate your contacts. That's kind of a nice one because the Zoho's, the, the exchange is kind of a little uh, little wonky. Um, Ring Central, SMS for Zoho CRM and uh, Map 
plotter for Zoho CRMs. I'm curious if this one is still in the marketplace because it seems to, I think it's a private marketplace app. Yeah. And it's separate from their standard. It's separate from their standard telephony integration as well. So it makes sense. It's growing quick. I think they put it out just this past year. And with so many people using ring central, it, uh, Makes sense to yeah, centralize sure all your this, SMS there too. Is it that one or is it the one that Matt Kuchek does? Um, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, oh, apps XYZ. This looks like it's different. Huh. Interesting. Might be a different one because I know Matt has one that um, is, that he's been doing for a while, but I'm not sure. This is not that. Interesting. Have you played with this one before? I don't think this one in particular. We're going to have to take a look at that. That might be uh, that might be worth taking a look at. So, all righty. And then moving on, Zoho Desk has improved the ticket visibility. You can kind of change the filtering around. Um, nice, nice improvement. Yeah. So this is really inside a desk, mostly about departments, right? So viewing uh, tickets by department, and then the uh, way that that will apply over to the CRM. Uh, a common headache for people is that I might have, let's say, two departments inside of Zoho Desk, one of them for sales inquiries and one of them for customer service inquiries. And within Desk, I can filter those by department. But if I go to the CRM version of that account and I look at its tickets, I'm going to see all of them. And so if I'm a salesperson, I might not want to see those 10 customer service tickets. You know, I might just want to see sales. And so now you're basically able to filter those within an account view, or even select that only certain departments tickets should even come into the CRM at all. Um, Really nice, actually. It seems minor, but when you've got, I mean, people will have tons of different departments going in desk, and you just really might not need every one to see every single ticket from all of them. So it's going to look at desk, whatever department you're a member of in desk, when you're in the CRM, those are the tickets you're going to see. Yeah. And I think what it'll do is you can choose like if they should see all of them with a filter or if they should just see ones that they're a member of that department inside a desk. And it's really nice that it's actually looking at the user permissions in desk and then pulling those to CRM to determine what they see. It's, it's pretty slick. Nice, nice. All righty. And then one for India, uh, it's a payroll Arby or Abri. Abri scheme implementation. I don't know what the Abri scheme implementation is, but if you're in India and you're doing payroll, um, the Abri scheme implementation is now supported. Uh, it looks like it has to do with when they were hired and how much they make and all of those kind of things. So a uh, interesting little change over there for Zoho Payroll. Um, and I think that you know Zoho Payroll, we've talked about it before. It's a nice application. It's only available in, I think, three states in the US. It's in beta and seven others. Um, but of course, Zoho, wherever Zoho has employees in the US, pretty much is where <laughs> payroll is. And of course, in India as well. So, anyway, there is Zoho payroll. Um, and then also, we've got now uh, projects. Uh, the iOS app for projects now supports global search across all the projects. Minor update but an important one. Yeah, and actually a nice quality life one. With projects, there's so many different places to search, you know, a project, a task, an issue, an event, you know, all those different things. And so being able to just search across all of them, um, definitely nice to have. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All righty, and moving right along, we've got the Zoho Projects Year in Review. We're going to end this with three Year in Reviews. So uh, Zoho, there's a nice roundup over in the Zoho community on everything that happened in Zoho Projects this year. Uh, it was a lot. You had the release of Zoho Projects 7.0. Um, you know, just a lot going on. This will tell you how many projects were created, comments, kind of the overall usage of it. But it's up significantly. And I think that, you know, for us, we were always kind of, yeah, Zoho Projects is usable. It's a little bit. This year, they really, they really did a lot of tweaks to it that made it super nice. Yeah, the, the big UI update, I think, when they went to uh, Project 7.0, that was this year, huh? That seems like such it a was. long time ago now, but that was actually this year. Um, yeah, tons of new integrations. The new UI makes it so much more usable. Um, you know, tons of quality of life improvements across the application. I mean, if you are running projects and you do kind of fit into that waterfall or Gantt chart style of project management with all your different task dependencies and dates, uh, it's a really powerful tool. 
Yep. And then wrapping up our year in review, we've got Zoho Meeting. Uh, a lot of great, great improvements to Zoho Meeting. Uh, you know, we'll discuss one of the, there were a lot of things we absolutely said had to be done to Zoho Meeting. A lot of those got done. Um, they've made, you know, it's getting better and better. I mean, this year was the year they introduced a waiting room. It used to be you just kind of had to refresh your browser over and over. Um, but the improvements are are tremendous. Um, I, I guess the only thing we can say about it is, you know, we still need that recording quality to get a little higher quality, right? And the general audio quality on the calls can be a little bit compressed sounding compared to other tools, yeah. which for a lot of meetings might not matter. But, you know, if you're going to be in a lot of meetings all the time, it kind of stacks up. That's nice. And they did. I mean, the, they've got stream to YouTube, which is nice. You don't need to use a third party application to stream to YouTube and you can edit it. There's a whole bunch of things there. So um, I look forward to Zoho meeting uh, actually getting it done this year. Cause I would love nothing better than to move off of zoom. Um, you know, Zoho meeting now supports native, um, zoom integration or native, uh, Calendly integration. Is that right? No, I got uh, Zoho that. meeting. No booking Book, supports no, zoom. bookings. Bookings now supports the zoom, right? So we're getting close. So bookings always supports meeting. If meeting could get here, it would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. It would be, you know, um, I wish they would have, I don't know. We're going to have to look if Zoho meeting actually has like a, I don't, not sure. Do they have a Gmail plugin that allows you automatically to add a meeting? I'm not sure it might be supported. The problem for us is that it has to integrate with Calendly and right. Zoho bookings. Zoho bookings is just not uh, yeah. stable enough to use with its calendar sync issues. So yeah, they'd have to really fix both of those for, for us to really make that jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, uh, what happened with Control, formerly Orchestly, uh, in 2021? Um, we talk about this a lot. If you're a fan of the show, you know, we've actually never deployed this, but uh, they do, it's under constant development and mm -hmm. there's a lot going on with it. So there must be some big use cases out there. And I think 2022 is going to be the year we do a control implementation. <laughs> I think we yeah. said that in 2020 about 2021. <laughs> I well, think it's so trickier too. now, now that it's not included with Zoho one, you know, we find ourselves trying to make sure that we're optimizing and using all of the Zoho one tools before we start looking outside of Zoho one for things that are going to cost people more money. So in yeah. our, in our cases, a lot of the times, if you're all in on Zoho, then we build your workflows just through the native applications. But Definitely an interesting app kind of used to bridge workflows across a bunch of different disparate systems. Um, but it's one of those ones that you just have to find that really specific use case where you need it and where it will add that value. Yeah. So a great year for Zoho. And with that, Tyler, it's time for our 2021 year in review. So let's start with January. Um, you know, out of the gate, Zoho, I don't know how many new applications, someone in the chat room, just keep a running count, but so many <laughs> applications, many, many applications. <laughs> so they started with uh, Aratai, I believe is how we uh, mm -hmm. determined that was pronounced. And if you don't know, that is basically a WhatsApp. It's a mm -hmm. chat messenger. You can make phone calls on it. You can do video calls on it. It's their own version, their own chat messenger. Um, I have it on my phone communicate with a few people over in uh, Zoho over in India on it. It's uh, it's a very slick interface. It's a very, very solid messenger application. Um, you know, I'll be curious, who knows? I mean, if it starts to, if it starts to grow, there are a lot to choose from out there and, you know, a yeah, lot, of, for lot sure. of people are using those. So, uh, and then route IQ was released, which is a very slick application that, um, what are some of the applications that competes with their... Like, it would be kind of like a badger mapping. I mean, it does part of what those applications do. So it, it's really like, it's a standalone application, but I would really only imagine you using it in congruence with the CRM, you know, where you're right. kind of taking a list of leads or accounts, you're dropping their addresses onto a map. And then based on, you know, lead or account ownership, a sales rep can open it up and plan a route, right? An optimized route between those locations. Right. So tools like Badger delivery. Mapping and, and Mapsly will do that, but they also do territory management and things like that. So it's it's kind of solving that specific use case for routing. Yeah. 
And then I guess the reason you forgot that Zoho Project 7 was launched this year, because it was in January. Got it, <laughs> so right at the a, beginning. Yep. <laughs> right at the beginning of the year. And then there were a ton of improvements to WorkDrive this year. Uh, they had a new Genie app. Um, I believe when this was launched, though, it was for Windows only. And I still think this Genie app may be for Windows only. Let's see if my memory goes back that far. Yes, it's currently only supported for Windows OS. I don't think a Mac version has come out for this thing yet, but a super nice app for connecting. But Zoho's got a bunch of other applications you can use that actually can do synchronizations. And they've made a lot of, uh, a lot of changes to that. So this is in beta. Um, still in beta. We're looking at the article here. Um, so that was in January. I haven't heard much about that application, um, but I know some Windows users who have used it and like it uh, very, very much. And those were the big highlights from January, quite a lot. But then we moved into February and kind of had a lot more here. So Zoho Social Big one for these guys, uh, the ability to add YouTube content. You had a whole content library you could pull from. So if you don't know, Zoho Social allows you to manage all your social media content, you know, Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and connect all of them, schedule out all your, your social media posts in advance and drop them. So uh, nice, nice, nice update there. And I think the UTM parameters was a big one as well, huh? Yeah, for getting that click through and tracking if you're going to capture Right. If I click through a, an ad or a post on social and I drop onto a forum, being able to know that I came from there is a huge part of any of that inbound marketing is getting everything attributed. Yes. And for those anal retentive people like myself, Zoho CRM allowed for the removal of some system defined fields, which I was think, like, was this when they did the currency and exchange rate? It was as long as you didn't have a custom currency field in the record, you could start to pop right. some of those out. Definitely nice. And to we have. always had a method. We've always had the methodology. We would create a whole little section in the CRM called record data, move it down to the very bottom of the record, and just drag all those custom mm -hmm. fields you couldn't get rid of down there. Uh, but it's kind of nice that you can go ahead and get rid of some of those system defined fields now. And then Zoho Motivator became part of Zoho CRM. Um, basically, the CRM had a motivator type thing, it was called Game Scope. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people used GameScope quite a bit. Um, Zoho Motivator was its own standalone application, which a whole bunch of people used. And it, it did a bunch of stuff. They made it a, not a standalone application where they killed it. They put it into CRM. And I don't know, the jury's still a little bit out on it. It's very nice. Um, I don't think it has, you know, a lot of people use Motivator. It was for sales teams. It would be real time live up on a TV screen, all kinds of cool dashboards. We did some really nifty stuff with that in the past. Yeah, they, they've worked um, on it a lot. I mean, it's it's um, it doesn't quite have as pretty of TV dashboards as the old one does, but it has the same idea right? Where you're creating a KPI, you're making a game out of it. And then you're able to present kind of like a rotating image of John's in first, James is in second. Um, the UI is still a little bit different, but I think, you know, this change, even though it caused, a, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of growth of gray hairs as they kind of deprecated one before they had fully replaced it. It does make a lot more sense to just be part of the CRM, right? I mean, Motivator was its own application, but it was only used for the CRM. So I think, this makes a lot more sense, makes it a lot more clear. Um, and I think as they continue to improve it, it'll kind of hammer that point home that it was a good decision. Nice. Yes, nice. And then Zoho Books added an integration to Sure Payroll. Um, and this allowed, basically what this did is it automatically, if you use Sure Payroll, you could connect it to Zoho Books. And once your payroll is run, it would automatically push that journal entry into Zoho Books. So everything would be nicely broken down for you. A very nice integration. We actually switched to Sure Payroll for several months and loved it. Um, the only reason we left is we kind of moved to a whole different model because we had employees all over the country. And so we wanted to do something a little different, but it's part of uh, Paychex. Very uh, good team. If your company is less than a hundred, mm -hmm. you want to have kind of a nice payroll integration with uh, Zoho Books, that's for you. Um, it's a nice application. Uh, and then uh, Zoho Analytics uh, revamped the entire user interface. Um, yeah, and the, these CRM are actually two these are actually two changes that were great. Um, so with the the user interface, one of the big things that they added there was the ability to create an organization admin, 
the way that analytics is set up is that you have your account admin and then that account admin can pull in, you know, data sources to create different workspaces. And the way that it worked before is that you had to make someone an admin individually of each workspace. Um, this change allowed you to basically make someone a org admin who would be an admin by default of any workspaces. So it saves a lot of time and, and hassle of getting the user set up. And then they also kind of slipped in with that update, the ability to sync over CRM subforms, which is something I had been begging for for a long time. It was actually on our list for 2021. And they granted that wish. So thank you, Zoho. Um, so yeah, a great, great round of updates in February for uh, analytics. And then uh, PaidSense introduced pop-ups and banners. This is an application that you know we've heavily adopted this year internally. There's just so much. If you're not familiar, Zoho PaidSense is kind of a Swiss army knife of crazy little web tools. Um, it can give you a heat map on your website to see where people are going, what they're doing. It allows you to implement uh, A-B testing live on when you're, when you're doing A-B testing on your website. It allows you to, it'll monitor forms. If people are filling in forms on your website, it'll tell you when they abandoned those forms. Uh, and then they've, you know, you've now got little pop-ups. So you can have little pop-ups come just onto the screen, drop down at the top of the screen, come to the bottom, wherever you want to place them uh, for little announcements and those kind of things. It just on and on and on. It does quite a bit. Um, and when you combine that with sales IQ, you get a heck of a lot of great data as to what's happening in your website. So good stuff there with Absolutely. page sense. Moving on to March, two more applications. They took a breather in February mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they dropped a new application and a new bundle. Uh, the application was Zoho Voice. So yes, that's their, their actual in-house voice over IP option. You actually buy your numbers through it. Um, at this point, I don't think it was integrated with many of the Zoho applications. It was kind of a it standalone. It wasn't integrated with it wasn't yeah, integrated with anything, not even CRM. Yeah. And I think uh <laughs> it's it's come a long way. I do you know, can you port numbers yet? I know that was kind of one of the big hangups with it, pun intended at first, is that um, you know, you couldn't actually move your existing numbers to it. Cool application, great user interface, um, probably needs a little bit of work, maybe a price cut here and there just to keep it competitive, but uh, yeah. definitely cool for them to get into that space, you know, and be that one-stop shop. It is. It's, I don't consider it ready for prime time right now. Uh, based on the pricing it's at, where it's at, kind of the lack of features, um, Ring Central is the way to go. Take it from your good friends here at Zanata Consulting. We have tried all of them and we use them all and we keep coming back to ring central over and over and over from a features uh perspective from just a rock solid perspective um you know if you're if phones are important to you and they're not for a lot of companies a lot of companies really don't you know it's that that's not but if phones are important to you making sure those calls are received all those kind of things just go with ring central but we will keep an eye on zoho voice because i have a feeling you know next year it it might be uh it might be what we want to look at, and then they launched a new bundle which is called Zoho Marketing Plus, and I don't remember exactly what they threw into this, but it was a kind of a kitchen sink. On this yeah, bundle. I mean it's it's effectively I think going to be a lot of the things that are going to roll into marketing automation. You know when that eventually gets uh, finalized and rolled out, I think it contains and we'll see here once uh once, once the, page the page loads, loads, but it should contain your page <laughs> sense, your campaigns. I think maybe sales IQ. Um, so kind of trying to cover any of those various needs that you've got across your marketing stack all within one subscription. Yeah. So the marketing plus, I'm just going to go to it a different way here. So, um, kind of hard to, you know, Zoho, you really need to just kind of tell every, all the, <laughs> they do this all the time where mm -hmm. you go to the marketing plus, and you really don't, not sure what you've, uh, what you've got in it. So, yeah, so you're anyhow, getting things they, like writer for your collateral, you're getting campaigns for right. emailing, you get work drive for storing all of your various documents, um, Zoho yeah. social, Zoho survey, marketing hub, kind of all the various marketing yep, tools kind of, within their suite, as well as Zoho analytics. Thing. So nice to have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think if I go to our website, I can actually tell you what apps are in here. If we just go to our bundles, <laughs> um, I think this is probably the better way to do it. And let's go to where's Marketing Plus. Do you see it on here? Well, it looks no, like Marketing Plus. Looks like Marketing Plus is not. We got two workplaces. Huh. 
Let's see. Maybe that's marketing. Oh, here it is. Marketing plus. All right, team. Got a little air on the website there. So you get campaign, social marketing, automation, survey, meeting, page sense, work drive, analytics, and backstage. That's a heck of a package for $25 per user per month. You know? Yep. I mean, man, that is a whole lot of applications uh, for that for that rate. So uh, great bundle. And uh, that was a that was a nice launch. And then Zoho Desk, you loved this one. They had skill-based ticket assignment round robin. Yes, it's kind of a cool one. Within Zoho Desk, you can basically define skills and then associate skills to users. And then if you turn it on, it will actually use some natural language processing to try to match an incoming ticket based on some skills and then assign it accordingly. Um, Pretty cool. Definitely one of those things that you have to do your homework first and really create a robust set of skills and kind of let it learn some of the terminology. Um, but if you take your time and you're patient with the natural language processing, it's a it's a pretty cool time saver. Yeah. And then also in March, Zoho Vault had a f- complete revamp of its uh, Chrome and Firefox extensions. A lot of progress to that app. It is a rock solid password management tool. It's great. They, they totally improved the UI on the, the web version. They totally improved the UI on the, the extensions. Um, and you know, if you just, if you have Zoho one, it's just included, just a great mm-hmm. password manager for your organization. And then, uh, 25 years of Zoho. That, that would have uh, been in happened. March. March was when they turned 25. So, uh, they yeah. can now rent a car, right? Yeah. And shout out to, uh, Raju Vignesa. He is, you know, the chief evangelist for Zoho and he dropped in on the CRM Zen show and talked about 25 years of Zoho. And it was just, uh, it was uh, super, super nice. And then we had the price change, mm-hmm. <laughs> which kind of caught everybody a little off guard, but uh, Zoho has not had a price change in so long. Uh, they basically, if I was to sum it up, Zoho went ahead and they did a 15% price increase pretty much across the board. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not exact, but that's kind of the closest the closest way to look at it, I think. Yep. Um, they did give existing clients a heck of uh, a lot of leeway on that. If you're an existing client, um, the rate change doesn't happen to you until I think next year, right? Mm -hmm. It's in January. I think you've got till January 17th or 18th. Yeah. Um, And if you go ahead and you change yourself, if you're on monthly, if you're on annual, you're, you're good until your next annual renewal, of course. But if you've been paying month to month right now, and you switch it to annual before the 16th, 17th, 18th of January, you're going to lock in that old rate. And so what does that mean on uh, Zoho One, for example? You are paying uh, $35 per per month right now. And I think the new mm-hmm. monthly on Zoho One is $45. Is that correct? Yep. $45. So you, if you pay annually, it's going to still be the $30 rate, which is the annual rate. So for mm-hmm. $360 a year, you know, rather than paying the $45 per month rate. So uh, pretty good. It's actually some real rather, savings there. Yeah. yeah. It's 540, right? 540 mm-hmm. as opposed to three, yeah, $180 a year if you make that jump. So pretty, uh, pretty. So if you're thinking about it, you know, do it now, do it in the next couple of weeks, but uh, you will be, you will be set. We're done with March. We snuck in. Yeah. I think we snuck in a little PSA there just cause <laughs> <laughs> we did Should put a little, our PSA logo should appear now. All righty. Moving on to April, two new applications. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and these are good ones. Uh, these are really they good are. ones. So they first they... launched Zoho data prep, which is kind of like a tool that you would use between two systems. So if you had a, you know, Amazon Redshift database and you wanted to get that data into analytics, you might route it through data prep first and, you know, proper case everything and standardized phone number formats and maybe do a couple table joins so that you're only pulling one joined table rather than two and then joining them within analytics. Uh, they've also done some cool things there around integrating it with CRM for some ongoing data cleanup and things like that. Um, pretty slick tool all things considered. And then they also launched Zoho Learn, which is their LMS kind of targeted at your internal users. Uh, We actually did a couple videos on that one, maybe a month or two ago, and we've been using it internally and it's rock solid as well. Great application. Um, Again, it's an internal LMS. So 
If you're looking for something where, hey, I want to create these courses and push them out to the world, that's not for you, but there is another Zoho application you can do that for. We'll talk about that later. Um, but Zoho Learn, we love it. Great application. And this is a big month. We then had Sales IQ 2.0, which was released. And this was a major overhaul, Tyler. I mean, it just was. Yeah, so I mean, much they, in this. They redid the UI. They redid the whole chat interface. Um, redid they the bots. Redid, yeah, redid the bots. They redid how you set up your brands and all your user permissions. I think some of the top line, like key stuff that people will care about with the Sales IQ 2.0 is um, they added a new functionality for building a Zobot which is a kind of directed chat tool, you know? So, hey, why are you on the website? I click a prompt, cool, check out this page, have any more questions? If I say yes, you connect me to a salesperson. Um, you know, those bots used to have to be built all within Zoho Deluge in a quite terrifying code interface that even a really good Deluge um, scripter was gonna have some headaches with. They rolled out a really easy to use and really powerful codeless builder for that. Um, they also rolled out a separate bot called an answer bot, which uses natural language processing to basically query FAQs and knowledge base articles and serve up you help got for bots people everywhere from. So you got bots year. everywhere now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and both of those really solid, um, good updates across the board for 2.0 over in sales IQ. Yeah. So I'm looking as if you're watching us on video, is this the Zobot icon? That's the Zobot. Yep. I have not seen the Zobot before. Mm. He's kind of sinister looking. <laughs> he does. Oh, no, man. He's got like the <laughs> downward facing eyebrows, right? Like, yeah. looks like he's yes. angry. And Orkesley rebranded to Control Q N T R L. Uh, this basically allows you to do workflows across multiple applications and all sorts of things. And as we that's talked actually, about I think earlier, when they spun it, that's when they spun it off of Zoho One, right? And stopped correct. including it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Orkesley is no longer. Now, is Orkesley still a part of Zoho One if you had it before? I think if you had it before, then you still have it. Similar to right. Showtime. Show, some, which we'll talk about soon. Exactly. All righty. So April, What I right now, I vote for April as the biggest news month. I think you know? so. I mean, yeah, Sales IQ 2.0 so. is huge. And I could, I will say we could have included a story in the next six months because they just kept making more and more articles about it. We thought we'd keep yeah. it just to April. So we tried to cover yeah. everything there, but uh, yeah, that was a big news spot for them. I think all year all right. with all those improvements. So, so, so far, April is, is my month. We'll see. We've got many months to go. Um, all right. And in May, kind of a minor update, but a major update for us internally, because, you know, Zoho CRM became HIPAA compliant, which is the health insurance portability and accountability act, I think. Is what Maybe it's health information, for. health information health portability, informa health information portability and accountability act. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, this is a law that says your medical data needs to remain private, mm -hmm. and you have to have it locked down. And in the past, we've had a lot of companies come to us and they say, you know, we need to have the CRM be HIPAA compliant, and we're kind of like, well, can't do it. And now mm -hmm. it is in fact HIPAA compliant, which was and a this big was just big the first of many. They they really. That'll be a common theme, I think, spoiler alert for some of the other months here, that they they really worked on making a lot of applications HIPAA compliant. So they must have had some big customers or use cases that uh, yeah. demanded that. Yeah. And that this probably also, there was a slew of CRM encryption updates mm -hmm. that rolled out this year, which is you know kind of tied into this as well, I would think. Um, and the Zoho calendar got a major overhaul to its UI. Boy, did it need it. Um, it looks like a nice modern calendar now. So mm -hmm. it's uh, just really a UI change um, and it, it looks great. Um, and then <laughs> as we talked about earlier, Zoho Voice, which was released in what month was that? Uh, March. Was that March? Maybe February. Here. Zoho Voice was released in March. March and then in uh, May, <laughs> it uh, <laughs> It got integrated with Zoho. That was so with the phone bridge, right? This was the phone bridge integration, which yeah. is kind of like the Zoho backend for all of the back end, uh, yes. phone integrations. Right. Which it cracked us up at the time because you think it would have dropped out of the gate. But the Zoho, mm -hmm. I imagine the phone bridge team said, I don't know. I don't know. We got to see. <laughs> see if we'll let this in. 
Um, and then Zoho Marketing Hub, minor news, but they changed their name to Zoho Marketing Automation. Um, they were sued by HubSpot mm-hmm. um, well, in uh, 2020. They were sued by HubSpot to change their name. Uh, maybe they just uh, decided, great, we'll just, you know, we'll just put a put a nip this. Yeah, and this button. was this was kind of supposed to lead into a lot of different product changes that kind of got put on hold this year um, with a lot of the COVID workforce issues that they ended up having. But it was supposed to be the first step towards consolidating a lot of different applications into marketing automation. Um, we're probably looking forward to that in 2022 at this point. Um, we're hopefully we'll see yeah. some more progress there. We were. They're hoping to. Inch. They want to fix the clarity, right? It's it's a common thing, and we get asked it, and Zoho get asked asked this all the time, of why is there campaigns and marketing hub or now marketing automation when they do essentially the same thing? They know it's confusing. They know it needs to be more clear, and this was their step towards making those changes that ended up just getting waylaid in 2021. Yeah. Well, I think this year they had a lot of missteps, though, because at one point, you remember, they gutted campaigns. They removed a lot from the campaign's workflows, and then everyone screamed and shouted, and especially partners screamed and shouted very loudly, and they ended up rolling those back. And Zoho admits also that marketing automation is very broken, and there are a lot Mm -hmm. of things with it. And so the whole thing was you can't gut campaigns until you release the new version of Zoho marketing automation, which still hasn't been released. Although, Mm -hmm. like I said, we were on an internal call here a few week a week ago. And the word is, I think, you know, in the next few weeks, this, you know, marketing automation is going to come out, um, but they need, to, but in the meantime, campaigns has just, we'll talk about that, but marketing automation never got a single update this year that I know of, mm-hmm. never Nothing had an announced fix, no. never had, they might've got a little announced. thing here and there, but uh, yeah, nothing yeah. significant, but campaigns was on a steady up, uh, uptick the entire time. And then in June, a relatively slow month, but kind of nice. The CRM added multi-organization support with single sign-on. I mean, fantastic for those that need it, right? And that, that's basically if you wanted one Zoho account, maybe you, um, maybe you have a company that you kind of act as a holdings company where you kind of own these two other companies that you want to be able to log in under one account and jump into both CRMs, but you need them to operate totally differently right? Different workflow, totally different leads and contacts databases. Um, and now supports that. Um, and I think it also supports it even if you're on Zoho One, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I, I think you can also do that if you're on the Zoho One license. Yeah. And then this was another theme that we'll you'll see as we kind of roll through, but Zoho Forms added language translation. Um, this is using Google Translate and one other, <clears throat> I can't think of the name, is it Babel or something like that. There's another one, but basically you can go ahead and integrate with, you know, the big one is uh, Google translate and basically it'll automatically translate your forms. So very nice. Yes, it was. And then moving into July, you know, they took a month back on the grinds. (laughs) Boom. Back on the new applications. Um, Zoho shifts was launched. Um, This is a, interesting little application. It almost looks like a creator application to me. It does. Um, I would bet you it is. Uh, yeah. It has that same look and feel as bookings, you know, yep. and, um, pretty good application though. I mean, it's basically used for shift management and that's just about it. You add your users, you create shifts, you put them on the ships. They can, I think, you're, check in and check out of the ships. Yeah. You're basically um, creating your schedule for the week. So you've got, you know, your 10 employees when they're, when they're starting, when they're stopping, what shifts they're working and you can, you know, lay out your entire week. It'll tell me how, how many hours you've done, what the cost of that's going to be at the end, you mm-hmm. know? So if you, cause you have the employees rates in there, um, you know, how much you're spending per day. You yeah, and you actually kind of have worked on implementing this for one of our clients. I think you've kind of stepped I, them through I some have. of it. So I you like might've it. even used it more than me. But yeah, everything I've really heard nice... says that it's not going to change your life, but it's a solid app that does exactly what you kind of need it to do at a base yeah, level. I mean, it's a fancy spreadsheet application because <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you could have a tab in spreadsheets that has all the employees and how much money they make. And then you could create another thing and you could pull it all in other hours and you could do it. This does it for you. Super, super nice. And they threw it into Zoho one, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And then Zoho Contracts was launched in July as well. Um, this is a really interesting application. 
uh, mm-hmm. because it comes preloaded with so many contract templates. But uh, to simplify this, you basically in the CRM, you can go through and you can, you know, have all the fields and the contacts or in an account and you basically can push a button and generate a contract, not doing it through Zoho Writer, which is, you know, using an email template that way, doing kind of a mail merge kind of thing, but they're actually directly connecting in and then contracts connects into sign and it mm-hmm. handles the overall flow. And there's a lot there. It had the potential, I thought, for the longest time to not only be a contract builder, but just a massive proposal kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You could do all of your proposals and everything over there as well, but it doesn't really support any images. It's text-based yeah, it's contracts. That, that's kind of what we found is that it's not Zoho proposals. It is Zoho contracts. And it has great features for that. Like one of the ones that I thought was really interesting is that you can basically make a user group in there for like a legal team. And then you can say only the legal team can go in here and add these clauses and sections and, you know, verbiages. And so you can basically have them create everything and say, oh, you have this section. That means you need to pick from one of these other sections to go along with it. Um, So it's really built for contracts and not for proposals, but it does do that pretty well. Yeah, it does. It does. And then you were excited about this analytics 5.0 launched. Yeah. And I think, uh, when about was what exactly was 5.0? I think that was when they kind of rolled in data prep and they rolled in a lot of those other applications. Yeah. They're embedded BI, right. And then the marketplace for third-party applications. Um, so yeah, analytics 5.0, interestingly, didn't have a lot of updates for analytics itself. It was mostly kind of these tie-ins, right. For other tools that are now plugging in that kind of give you a more well-rounded, uh, BI suite. Yeah. There was, uh, There was a lot there. I mean, if you go back and you look, it's so funny on all these applications, if you were just kind of take a screenshot of them, you know, prior Mm. (laughs) to the beginning of the year, and then you look at them now, um, you know, big, 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 slow iterative changes. It's kind of like getting old, you know, (laughs) you you, you look in the mirror every day, you never notice any changes, but boy, there are changes there. Um, All right. And then Transmail was renamed ZeptoMail. Uh, Transmail stood for transactional email, and it's mm-hmm. basically kind of a developer's tool that allows, you know, if you're, you're building an app and when someone does something, you want to send them an email, right? This mm-hmm. is something you can plug into and use. And just to be politically correct, uh, basically, they changed the name to Zepto Mail. Um, Where a Zepto is a Zepto second, which is the shortest yes. measurable unit of time. I don't remember how many decimal places it is, um, but it is many. And so they thought that would be a fitting name. And as uh, Greg, who's our lead developer, noted, you know, we have our 401k with Transamerica, and he wondered when they were going to change their name to Zepto America. So <laughs> I, would, I would imagine that'll be soon. And then Zoho Meeting got a new integration with Zoho Notebook. So now if you were taking a note, you know, you basically <laughs> could write inside Zoho Meeting, you can do that. Uh, what's missing from that, Tyler? <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah uh still no integration with uh crm and i and i have to highlight i have to highlight for the viewers here when we were putting together the list of applications and the list of updates that we wanted to cover in this section brett made sure that we had one that had zoho notebook so that he can include this reference to i think your longest standing request which was but it is please forever. integrate notebook to crm it would just be so nice. It would just be, it'd just be great. Um, and I love the graphics that the marketing team did down there. <laughs> the little question mark on the CRM if you're watching us uh, on YouTube. Anyway, all righty, moving on. So still, we're still April, still the best month so far. Yeah, this is a big one though, but I think we'll stick with April still far. Moving on to August. All right, boy, so much to talk about here. Um, Zoho launched a new application called Trainer Central. You want to talk about this? Well, so this was their application that was kind of formerly Showtime, um, where you know you're kind of loading your content, you've got your trainers, and it's kind of like a webinar platform is what it was before. Um, what they did by moving it over to Trainer Central and launching it as a separate brand is basically turn it into like an external LMS and training tool, right? We're able to load in courses as well as content, as well as live sessions, and kind of sell and monetize courses through it. We got a preview of it a long time ago. We haven't really used it since, but even when it was in preview mode, it was really cool. I mean, it's basically Locked got solid. the same LMS as uh, Zoho Learn, which we've come to love. 
as well as the presentation tool of Showtime, which we've always loved outside of the recording issues. Um, so a really strong platform. Yeah, so here's the thing. So Zoho Showtime, like you said, kind of a webinar platform with a lot of great pluses to it. You can download content. There's just a lot of great things you could do in Zoho Showtime. And when we saw this, like you said, we were a bit confused because it didn't look anything like Zoho Showtime. And they said, oh, by the way, this is what Showtime is going to become. Um, so, But it really was a completely separate application that was built. They really, they weren't. So Zoho Showtime does not exist anymore unless you are a Zoho One subscriber and then it stays there. I don't know if they'll ever make any changes to it. I'm not sure what they're going to do, but you have Zoho Showtime all by itself sitting inside Zoho One. It's even though Zoho Meetings has webinars, if I was to do a webinar, I'd do them in Showtime. I just think it's it's the better way to go. Um, and so it's gone now. And Trainer Central, if you buy Zoho One now, you don't get Showtime and you don't get Trainer Central. Separate application you have to buy, but well worth it. I mean, a great application. And as mm-hmm. we said earlier, where Zoho Learn is just kind of for internal LMS and training. Trainer Central is for live training, paid training, LMS, all that kind of stuff. So Mm -hmm. if you're looking for something like that, that is the Zoho app. And that's kind of the launch, right? I mean, it had been around a while, but um, this was the official launch in August. Yep. And then the next one here, another in the slew of HIPAA compliance. Uh, They've also added it there for Zoho Biggin, which I think was probably the most reported on app in 2020. And then one of the least in 2021, it feels like they got most of what they wanted to get done with that one done last year. This one, just a couple little updates throughout this year for it. But uh, yeah, adding HIPAA compliance. Awesome. I mean, any application where you're storing a lot of customer data, you kind of have to have this if certain customers are going to use it. Yeah. And then on the backstage front, um, when COVID hit early, when COVID hit in March, 2020, Zoho was one of the quickest companies to react and add features and release tools and do all kinds of things. And what they did with Zoho Backstage, which if you're not familiar, it's their events management tool. You know, it takes in the registrations, you can sell tickets, it prints badges, it creates the web pages, it creates the agenda pages. It is an amazing application, mm-hmm. but it was for in-person events. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what month, but they quickly, quickly yeah, it was made it. Rapid. So, it was so you could rapid. host, yeah, you could host virtual events. So, yeah. you know, you, but you would have an in-person event or a virtual event. And then, then as things started changing and people were ha- doing hybrid events, well, Zoho backstage adapted with that. It was easy for them to do because yeah, they'd already had the virtual event. It's pretty interesting with Backstage. It's kind of a a case study for how Zoho has some competitive advantages because if you were just a ticketing platform, right, you don't have an entire web presentation engine and video platform and audio platform, right, just in your back pocket. But for Zoho, right when the pandemic hit, they've already got Zoho Meeting, they've got Showtime, they've got all these tools. They just need to work them into Backstage. So they're able to solve those problems just super quick. Um, but yeah, awesome to have hybrid as well as people kind of start tiptoeing back into normalcy here. Um, being able to give event attendees the choice is, uh, I think, pretty valuable. All right. And then Zoho Desk, you liked this one. It added ticket archiving. Yeah, not a uh, like sexy update, but one of many that they made this year for Zoho Desk. I, I think, and Jordan, one of our consultants, actually kind of made this point to me, and I think he's dead on is that a lot of their updates this year were uh, performance-based. They're looking to speed up the application, make it more responsive, more quick. And so basically with ticket archiving, what they're saying is closed tickets that are six months old are going to get moved to another database. You can still always see them. You can still always get to them, but they're no longer going to show up in like an all tickets or closed tickets view. They're only going to show up in an archive tickets view unless you unarchive them. And basically just moving these big blocks of data out of your normal kind of working list of tickets just improves the speed at which I can go and pull 100 tickets up. Um, So they did a couple. I don't know if we're going to talk about all of them here, um, but that was a big one in their push to really improve the speed and responsiveness there for Zoho Desk. And then Zoho Booking added native Zoom integration before it was through Zapier, which Mm -hmm. just was uh, not that great. And they added in native uh, booking integration. Uh, Zoho Booking, 
is, you know, it's getting better and better and better. Um, we're going to have to take another look at it. It's just, it's what I, there's some, yeah, I think what I've, you know, what I've realized with Zoho booking over time is that it, it wasn't made to be Calendly or be Acuity. And the big difference with Zoho bookings is that it stores its own calendar for any of the things that you're allowing bookings to, where Calendly doesn't store your meetings. It's when someone goes to book you, it queries once right then to check your meetings and then serve up availability. Whereas what bookings is doing is like, I could go into bookings and just add an event in bookings onto the calendar that's within bookings. And because of that different data structure choice that they made, it just makes it so that they can't provide that same level of syncing as you can with Calendly because it's not feasible for them to query Google every 30 seconds, every minute, every five minutes and get all of your events. It just wouldn't work from like a bandwidth perspective. So it seems just like the design intent of bookings is that you put things in there that are only going to be managed in there, right? So if you were using it to book conference rooms, it would work perfect, right? If you're using it to book chairs in a salon, it'd work perfect. But if you're using it to book a human who's going to add their own events on the Google calendar and needs to work between the two, it just doesn't seem to be designed for that use case. No, since it's not really a real-time lookup, um, you know, I could be in Google calendar and say, oh man, I need to block off all day tomorrow Mm -hmm. and go into calendar and mark myself as busy for the entire day. And if it wasn't in that synchronization time <laughs> with bookings, someone could go into bookings on my bookings link and would say, Hey, tomorrow's wide open, you know, mm-hmm. and go ahead and book a meeting with me. Um, then that kind of causes some problems, but you know, we talk about this. If you're a long time listener to the show, man, we would love it. If Zoho mm-hmm. bookings could kind of get more. I almost time. think so they need to make a different calendar. app. I think that the way that they'll solve that eventually is by making a different app that is designed specifically to do the like Calendly style lookup on user input. Yeah. Well, and you can do this rather nicely in the CRM. The Mm -hmm. CRM actually has its own separate booking link you can do. They've made no improvements to this in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can do this. Drop the Zoom integration in and you can have that booking link and you can send that out. And that's actually querying in real time, but it doesn't give you that massive flexibility of building a link that says, hey, look at my calendar and look at Tyler's calendar and mm-hmm. only allow a person to book at this period. It's fine for like so a sales rep to quickly use for their own meetings, but it doesn't give you any type of like team or enterprise functionality, which makes yeah. sense. It's, it's kind of like tack on into the CRM. Yeah. All right. And wrapping up August. Um, Canvas for uh, Zoho CRM officially launched. This was, man, it's a long time coming. I don't know how long. Um, I originally saw this in, I think, at Zoholics in 2019. So that would have been April 2019 is when they originally rolled this out. Um, And then when it kind of hit beta, it was... We liked it. We used it, but it had a lot of scaling issues, right? So yeah, and a couple size... of usability issues. Yeah. You can edit yeah. fields without clicking the edit button, which takes off the canvas view. So it gets kind of confusing, but to um, their, to but... their power, to their credit, they've responded to that feedback quickly and effectively, yeah. right? Where they, they rolled it out to partners, partners said, this is great, but here's the five things you need to fix. And they've really worked through, I mean, the vast majority of those. I mean, you can now edit the fields on the fly. I think they've mostly resolved scaling. I mean, it's going to be hard to perfect that just because if I design a page that just doesn't scale well, you know, you kind of have to have some design intent behind it. Um, But they've been working hard on this and it is really, really cool. Yeah, they've done uh, some nice stuff. And the big thing when they released this as well is that you had all of these templates to choose from. So mm-hmm. I am not an artiste. <laughs> this made, you know, you basically could just say, hey, I'm going to use this template, then move things around, and it's a much better place to start. So um, kudos on them. And I believe, did at some point we cover that you actually could generate a link to one of these pages? I Didn't think so. That? They might have rolled that out later. You can actually do kind yeah. of like an embed or external view of one of them, which is awesome. Right. I and mean, you can build a really cool product page in here too. Yeah. So if you're watching us, yeah, share your view over portals. So uh, you basically had this ability, if you're watching us on YouTube, to 
you know, create a product page and to be able to share that. So um, I haven't played around with that, but cool stuff. Canvas, I think, uh, has really made some improvements. So, wow, that was only in August, it seems, I guess, because we've been talking about it for so long. So that wraps up August. And that brings us to September, um, where Zoho kind of launched a new application, Catalyst. You want to talk about Catalyst a bit? Yeah, so Catalyst is kind of like a developer tool. They well, they rolled out is it Catalyst and Sigma? I thought those rolled out at about the same time, or maybe they just went into beta at about the same time. Well, that was again, um, that was that was October 2019. At they the rolled, developer conference. At yeah. the developer conference is when we first got access to them. Yeah. Yeah. And so so Catalyst is like their serverless development suite. Um, primarily used for building like Zoho extensions and applications. And you've really seen it get used heavily this year um, to basically just speed up the deployment time of a plugin or extension that you want to add to the Zoho ecosystem. And Sigma is AWS, right? Yeah. It's, it's like the, where you host server. the applications you build in Catalyst. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then we talked about this earlier. Zoho Showtime officially got killed from Zoho Workplace. Um, and I don't know if it officially got killed altogether, but somewhere around here mm-hmm. was the end of the, you can't get Showtime by itself. You can only get it basically if you've got Zoho one. So they even took it from the workplace suite. Um, and then Zoho, ex- they did their entire, what do they call it? Transnational localism? Transnational localism. Zepto so national they, localism. <laughs> that would have been the title for this show <laughs> if, if we didn't already have one. Oh man. Um, basically, this is kind of interesting. Zoho bought like 350 acres in Austin proper, where they were going to build this massive, massive, massive campus, an event center, all kinds of things. It was basically going to be their worldwide headquarters showcase. COVID hit, and then you had the 8,000, 9,000 people that work in India all had to work from home. Everybody in Austin was working from home. And as they spun up the tools, they kind of decided, you know what? Maybe huge, big offices aren't what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Maybe what we want to have is just you know a small little office with 10 or 20 people. And their thought was you can actually go into kind of these rural areas where number one, labor costs are less, right? Um, and, and number two, maybe you've got great people there who would never have the opportunity to work at a tech company because there's never anything there. So they're basically spinning up rural offices. I mean, in Texas, is it three or four? I think so. Yeah. They're kind of doing like a hub and spoke model. Yeah. Having like a central office and then a bunch of satellite offices kind of surrounding it. A bunch of small little towns in Texas where they're actually opening an office where, you know, people can come in, but it's just 10 or 20. um, And they're kind of doing that everywhere. And um, good on Zoho. It seems to be what a lot of people are doing, you know. And then, uh, you know, I don't know. This might be the biggest news of all. Uh, (laughs) The CRM Zen show. We launched our Cobra News, which has made its way in three shows, four shows now. Which, much to my protest, has become a recurring segment on the show. (laughs) Uh, This was all brought about by the fact that uh, transnational localism, uh, Sridhar Vimbu, the CEO of Zoho, has actually moved out to a village in India. And, you know, he is doing a whole bunch of good things there. Well, when you live in a village in India, I guess you're going to come across a massive 12 foot long uh, cobra. Look at that thing. That's just yeah, that's big, massive. Dude. Oh, that is massive. Oh, man. So, yeah. And then they ended up catching it. They had a snake handler come and they, they caught the darn thing. And uh, there you go. That launched Cobra News, dude. I don't know. <laughs> it's big. I think it's big. Big, big stories. <laughs> really big cobras, big, big news. <laughs> Big news. Big, and it's all about Zoho at the end of the day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, if I ever had a Cobra, I'm going to name it Zoho, but I don't think I'll ever have one. All right. Moving on to October. It was a rainbow world. Mm-hmm. So this is <laughs> when, uh, yeah, this is actually a, a great update. It seems really minor, but visual updates make big differences. And so what they did here is basically had the ability to color code pick lists Um, And then that color coding will show up in charts and lists when you're seeing that field in a column and all those various different things. So 
It also will color code your Kanbans. So if you've got like a deal flow where you've color coded stage, that's now going to apply. And if you had a pipeline for your deals and you were looking at it by stage, that color coding is going to be consistent there too. Um, so having that type of visual clarity actually does make a difference, right? If you're used to blue being prospect and everywhere you look at a deal report, the prospect section is blue, it is actually valuable. Um, so yeah. a nice update there from them in the and CRM it also, team. It also introduced a fun bug, which is if you've got like bar charts, um, like embedded on your homepage where you're looking at things occasionally it'll, it'll just color them for you. It basically <laughs> will assign like a color to each month somehow in the back end, and you'll just get a pretty rainbow on your bar chart. But just um, once, which honestly, we enjoy, we enjoy, we enjoy it. I like it when that I happens. Do. It's a feature, not a bug. There you go. And then Zoho, uh, 121. Now this was, uh, kind of an odd way to do the announcement, but uh, one of the things we've been asking for for a long time was a unified user interface. And uh, Zoho rolled out kind of a bunch of changes for uh, 2021. Um, you know, we're saying that this was an October update. A lot of these things had rolled out during the year um, that had come in. Um, but I think the big one out of all of this was the whole um, unified interface that they rolled out. Yeah, the dashboard and kind of that like top down view that you get now with the jewels on the side. Um, yeah. You know, when it first came out, we had our kind of qualms with it. It's they're getting better and better, faster, more responsive. I think it's it's an evolution that the product needs. And I think and in this next year, it's just going to continue to get improvements and kind of cleanups to it. Yeah. And it's kind of just, you know, here's the thing. It's a personal preference thing. And you you're actually not forced into this unified interface if you don't want to. If you mm -hmm. go to one.zoho.com you're going to get the unified interface. And if you're watching the video on the screen, this basically allows you to switch through applications just by easily clicking on them. And it changes, you know, directly switches to add applications. You can pin apps on your sidebar. It's kind of a quick way to get around. On um, the other hand, a lot of people just like to pin tabs on the top mm -hmm. of their browser and you're really accomplishing the same thing. And if you go directly to the app, so if you go to crm.zoho.com, you lose that sidebar. Mm -hmm. right? That sidebar is gone and you don't have it. So you know, a lot of people said, oh, I liked it the old way. Well, you don't have to give it up. Mm -hmm. It's still it's still there for you, right? Absolutely. All right. And then uh, this was kind of a nice one. Um, something I never even would have thought of, but I, I like. But so as we talked about this earlier, Zoho has phone bridge and it allows you to connect a telephony provider to CRM and desk and recruit. And I think that's it. Um and, uh, but you could only connect one mm -hmm. and they now have it. So you can connect multiple telephony providers and it makes a lot of sense actually. Yep. So you might have like a, you know, ring central and phone burner kind of running in your CRM for salespeople. And then over in desk, you might want Amazon connect for call routing and things like that. So you're not able to kind of plug them in differently for different users and applications. All righty, Tyler, that takes us to. November. Um, all right. This is a big one. So Zoho campaigns kind of released a major, major update, which was you can now sync. So it used to be, if you set up a synchronization between CRM and campaigns, it really wasn't a synchronization. It was either you could look at it as a push from CRM to campaigns mm -hmm. or a pull from, from CRM into campaigns, but they really weren't talking back and forth with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and with this one, they're basically now pulling in everything. So all your camp contacts, all your leads, and you can even have it pull in your deals, which kind of mm -hmm. opens things up to a whole new world. You get all that data in, you determine what leads are going to be market ready or marketing leads and which ones are non-marketing leads. That's what's going to affect the numbers that you have that, that are in there. Um, and it's now a two-way synchronization and mm -hmm. it seems to work really well. Yeah. And this is one of those ones that we probably need to make a couple of videos on because um, it's it, it's a transformational change for how this integration works, where, you know, basically now you're going to pull in all your various leads and contacts. And now when you turn on the sync, you choose a module, not a view. Um, and then within that, you'll use the workflows inside of campaigns to assign them as marketing and non-marketing and add them to your different segments and lists and kind of use those as your if-then engine. 
And then you'll be doing a lot of your workflow or direct mail marketings um, through segments rather than lists. So it's it's a lot. And if you're a heavy user of campaigns, there's going to be some changeover, right? That, that might be a little frustrating at first, but it is a huge improvement to the integration as a whole. And I think brings it a lot more in line with you know, your HubSpot style integrations and your, you know, Salesforce and Pardo. Um, so it's definitely getting better and better. Yeah. But we have to add a PSA to this. Um, a bunch of people basically went ahead and did this and it's great and everybody's loving it. Um, but Zoho has pulled it down. So you actually no longer can do this migration and set this up. So if you didn't jump on the bandwagon during that two week period, when it was open, um, it's been taken down. And they're saying they're planning on re-releasing it in January that this came, this update will come back out. So we'll see about that. I have a feeling, Tyler. I mean, you know, you and I were kind of talking about this internally. I think what you talk about it's you know we had a client that they had a bunch like we're saying they had a bunch of whole open workflows. They clicked the button, they did the migration, and literally like eighty thousand text messages went out to every in the same like. Eight people were getting eight messages, and it was just insane. We had to yeah. come in and shut it all down. I think I'm I, wondering if this put a big hit on Zoho's like servers. Maybe, yeah. And I would think like a general good practice if you are going to do this yourself is when you pull in your contacts or your leads, pull them into a brand new mailing list. The mistake that we've seen people make is you know not having that full understanding that it's going to pull every single lead in the CRM into the list that you tell it it's it's going to add them to. And so if you were adding them to a list you already had, where you had a workflow associated with any record that enters that list, they're all going to go through that workflow. So you want to be really careful and you want to make a new mailing list for these and pull them all into that and then use your segments and workflows to recategorize them after you have them inside of campaigns. Yep, absolutely. All right. And then one of our favorite applications. I mean, man, oh man, do we love Zoho Click. 3.0 mm -hmm. was launched. If you're not familiar with Click, think of Microsoft Teams, think of Slack. Um, it's just kind of your internal communication board and just a great, great, great application. And so many enhancements were rolled out to that uh, this year. You know? Yeah, so it's got its whole sidebar projects integration. I think it has a you know, Microsoft Teams integration too. You've now got call recording, wider audio conferences. They've got a really cool whiteboard feature if you want to quickly kind of mock up some ideas while you're on a team call, co-hosting of meetings. I mean, it really just got a whole slew of improvements. And they really, well, the feature, it's just such a minor feature. But you now can organize all your contacts and all your channels and you can put them in groups. And it's mm -hmm. just, you know, rather than having to scroll through your list, you can always rearrange them, but now you can kind of group them. And that was just super nice. And I don't know how long that's been there. That might've uh, been before 3.0. That was actually something one of our team members pointed out. It's like, hey, did you guys know you can do this? It's like, no, we yeah. did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, if you haven't looked at Click, you're just going to scratch the surface with it. Because if you're a Zoho One user, the integrations that you can do with Click and the notifications that you can do with Click. I mean, not just workflows from the CRM, but the custom notifications, the custom things you can do. Every time an invoice is paid, you can you can have a channel in there to let people know that an invoice was paid. Uh, you know, every time you close a new deal, you can you can have a channel to say something new closed. Every all, all just so much you can do. Um, thereby keeping email clutter to an absolute minimum, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, really good stuff. Good stuff. All right. And then Zoho Biggin um, had an update. They launched Biggin Premier and um, it basically had multi-currency and advanced workflows and a new price. Yeah, it's just kind of a scaled up version of Biggin. Uh, never ending uh, additions to the confusion in this product of kind of how it's different than CRM. So now they've added a lot more workflows, a lot more field options, multiple pipelines, things like that. Yeah. Nice application if you do need that trim down CRM. Um, but you know, we've we've only really found a couple clients end up using it if they want that kind of streamlined mobile UI is generally what we've found that people like about Big N. Yeah. I mean it's it's a reminds me of pipe drive in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's kind of that pipe drive thing. Um, the only implementations we've really seen of it are where companies have a sales team. And the great thing is it comes with Zoho One. 
and they fix the synchronization between Biggin and CRM now. So you really can have this, you know, for the sales guys, you don't even, they can have access, but maybe they just want to live on their phones at Biggin and mm-hmm. um, good stuff there. And that brings us to December as we wrap up our review of 2021. And at the very last, this thing on our first on our list here, Tyler, has been on our wish list for three years now. I know you're on today. I I think I'm going to take credit. This was a Christmas present to us. I'm convinced <laughs> that that's why they did it during December. It was just to shut us up so that we stopped putting this on our things we wish for list every year. So thank you, Zoho. They were, they um, thank were tired you very much. Of, they were <laughs> tired of us hearing uh, of hearing from us. So, all right. So if you're not familiar, subforms are something you can add in a CRM. I think they can go. Is it eight columns? They bumped it to ten now. Actually, ten columns. Yeah, and it's, so it's a form. Yeah, so ten columns wide, and you just can you know you basically each one of the ten columns will have its own thing. Maybe it's a name. Maybe it's a product. It's a price. It's a quantity. You know, it could be whatever it wants to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a note field, and you could just keep adding and adding and adding up to a hundred lines long and so mm-hmm. Is that correct? So inside yeah. a record, you can kind of keep nif- nifty little track that way. Um, and you could never, you could never put it into an email. You could never not without a lot of custom it. code. I will right, say the right. team, the team in the couple years that we were waiting for this one, they did come up with some really good methods to automate it. To be able to yes. do it, but you couldn't just put it in an email template. And now you can. And, and so like it seems like a minor use case, but there's really a lot of value there. Like a common one that we get is, you know, a sales team might want a subform on the deal record. And in that subform, they're going to add products and quantities and discounts and kind of use it as like a quoting tool. And then by being able to put that into an email right? You can now send out a beautifully formatted email that basically serves as a quote, right? Where they don't have to download a PDF. They don't have to open anything. It's just got everything they need inside of that email. Um, So a lot of use case there, like, you know, other people in the real estate field sometimes use it for all the various people involved in a transaction. And maybe you want to send out a mass email introducing everyone to everybody else. And so you've got this nice little table of names and contact infos. And there's just a lot of value to being able to pull these into email templates. Uh, really is. And then Zoho Desk added the multilingual feature. Um, with it says 40 plus languages, that must be what uh, Google Translate supports. It must be. I think that's for the languages. knowledge base, I believe, right? It's automatically going to translate yeah. your knowledge base. Yeah. So if in Desk, if you have set up a knowledge base where people can go and, you know, look at articles and do those kind of things, um, it will auto translate. And basically, it'll run them through Google Translate and one other that I can't remember. Um, you know, rather than me keep saying, what's that other one? Let's quickly open the article here. So it basically is going to run them through Google Translate, or do you see it on here? I don't. I don't know if they put it on this one here. Yeah, I think they did, but I probably just skimmed through it. Uh, basically, it's just going to run those right through Google Translate and Unbabel. Unbabble. So, um, so if you use any of those services, you now can connect them with desk and it's going to auto translate all of your Zoho desk knowledge based articles. Pretty, pretty cool. And then we'll wrap it up with um, another Zoho desk article. They did guided conversations now, which is, uh, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's like uh, they took the codeless bot builder from Zobot. And basically built a way to do like a on-page customer service. So you might ask them some questions. What product are you having issues with? I choose a product. It does an embed in kind of a little iframe of that product and says, is it this one? Yes, it is. Okay, what kind of problem are you having? And it's, it's a way to start to gather some of this information before it becomes a ticket. And like for simple issues, it might be able to point them to a resolution for that. Um, So it's a pretty nice little tool. The thing that we'll need to play with and figure out is like, when would I use this versus a Zobot? Because Zoho Desk and Sales IQ have so many integrations um, that it sometimes is kind of tricky to figure out what would be the right one to use. Um, But I would imagine for more of your support needs, you might go this way. And for more of your kind of proactive sales engagement, you might go with the Zobot and Sales IQ. Yep. And then uh, Zoho Click added CarPlay, which was... uh... Quite a nice thing. So if you're not familiar with it, we talked about Zoho Click earlier. It's like Slack. You've got text messaging that comes in. 
You've got calls that are coming in. And before it really couldn't handle the text messaging, but it could handle the calls. It would kind of route them through your phone. Mm -hmm. And then that would go. And um, then it would, uh, you know, it would uh, basically do the entire, you know, give you that experience. So now you've got a CarPlay icon and you've got a CarPlay app and it allows you to kind of, uh, you know, run the, look at just within CarPlay, tap on click and see your text messages and uh, go from there. So pretty nice, pretty nice application. Absolutely. So our wish list for 2021. So first of all, this is what we asked for in 2021 at the, if you watched the show last year, this is what we wanted. If it's in red, we didn't get it. <laughs> if it's in blue, we got it. And if it's in green, we kind of got it. So mm-hmm. uh, as we look at uh, what's going on here, we basically wanted to see marketing automation fixed. It's crazy to think that we were taught that that was our big wish list last December. Yeah. Right. And that an entire year and that product, nothing happened to it. I mean, <laughs> nothing. It just didn't get fixed. No releases were done. Uh, we talked about Zoho bookings. It's all the problems we talked about earlier. We still, uh, it didn't it didn't get fixed. That means it's going to be on our 2022 wish list as well. Mm-hmm. For meetings, we wanted a waiting room. We, we got did that. get a waiting room. We got the waiting room, uh, but they still need to fix that recording engine. And they still need to, when you send someone a meeting, they, the calendaring needs to get fixed. It's just, sometimes it sends links. Sometimes it doesn't. So it's just kind of, kind of all over the place. And then we wanted them to basically fix the uh, recording engine and showtime, but they fixed that by just getting rid of the application altogether. <laughs> so nothing really happened there. Um, and then uh, Tyler, we had some other things we really wanted to see happen and you kind of feel like we kind of got them. Yeah. If, if we did blended colors, a lot of these would be like greenish blue. Um, and so, you know, with that Zoho one twenty one update that they did. They did solve for a lot of these. They're still kind of working on some of them with more of the standardized interface for settings, but they are working hard on these for more normalization across Soho One. So if we were to round up, we'd probably give this a blue, but you know, being the overly critical guys that we are, we'll keep it green for right now. Um, so really they've done a lot of it. it, just needs a little more polish, a little bit more updating. With the unified Zoho One dashboard, they've got that, but you just can't add custom views to it. They're going to do all these things, right? They're working on it and they're doing a really good job, but it just, it's a lot of work for them. So we're hoping that in 2022, those kind of customization elements will be finalized there with the kind of master Zoho one view. Yep. And that, uh, so then we had our uh, continuing our wish list for 2021. There were a bunch of other things we kind of wanted to see. Um, We wanted an integrated tasking engine. We got that. Uh, mm-hmm. With Soho Tasks, which I think is uh, very, very cool. If you haven't looked at, matter of fact, gosh, wasn't Soho Tasks its own app? Did we miss it that? Is. Well, it, it's part of Zoho Mail, and I don't know if it's fully released. It's kind of they, in like open they, beta kind of is it? feedback okay. gathering. I don't think they've gone full bore with it quite yet. But if you go to tasks.zoho.com, it does allow you to pull in from what you can pull it in from CRM, you can pull it in from mail, you can pull it in from projects, you can pull it in from what am I missing? Connect some others. You can pull it all in. Connect CRM, maybe desk. Um, Yes, we're working on that one for sure. That's why it's in our green. Yeah, yeah. But I got, okay, kind of got it, but it's still very, very good. Um, Canvas view, we got that. They launched the LMS platform twice. We got two LMS platforms. Maybe three. (laughs) Who knows? We've got a lot of LMSs this year. Um, I think what we were asking for was really Trainer Central. Mm -hmm. And they gave us Learn and Trainer Central. So it was a double win there. Uh, The subforms, mail merge, that finally happened, as we talked about. Syncing into Um, analytics, which was huge, hugely valuable. Um, yes. Still waiting on that last one. And there are ways to cheat this. So it was the least important of the three, but it sure would be nice to get a workflow trigger anytime a new subform row is added. Now, again, you can cheat it. If you've got like a total, you can run a workflow anytime that the total gets updated. Or if you do like a count of rows, you know, you can kind of cheat them, but it gets a little bit janky. Um, so it would be nice, but they've you know, they're, they've done a lot with subforms and they kind of rebuilt them on the back end too this year. And um, 
so yeah, they, they checked a lot of those boxes, which I think were on the 2020 and 2021 wish lists. And, and they another knocked them one we out. Didn't, yeah, another one we didn't get, which was the one you put on here, which is filter lookup fields in the CRM. Oh boy, I would love to have these. Basically, the idea here is that let's say I've got a deal record and I want to look up two different contacts. Maybe I have the customer and maybe in my contacts list, I also have a list of lawyers. Or maybe I want one uh, one contact lookup field called customer. And I want to set up that it only shows customers or contacts where the type is customer. And in my other one, I only want to show contacts where the type is lawyer. Right. And you're just not quite able to do that yet with the lookup fields. Okay. And then uh, unified time tracking across all applications. Oh, there's the big one. Right I think there. that's a pipe dream. <laughs> well, you I can track is- time and projects. You can track time and books. You could, you can't really natively track time and CRM. You can make it track time. Um, is it those just two, what other application are you wanting to unify that time I mean, track? Yeah. Desk projects like CRM desk, sales desk. activities, and you can unify them in reporting, but you don't have one stop, start timer across those apps. And I don't think we're ever going to get one. No, let's hope. Um, and then books inventory want to enable edits to inventory tracking settings after a transaction is recorded for an item. I don't think we can get this one. I think this is just too tied into the back end, and it, it it would sure be nice to be able to do that. So, according to uh, our marketing team, according to Wayne, we've got four point two five wishes granted, three wishes getting closer, closer, and eight wishes denied, which I think is denied. <laughs> so we got eight wishes denied, almost there, and that brings us to our twenty twenty two wish list. Um, ah, all right. Uh, because basically we can't recommend these applications to clients. We don't recommend these applications to clients and that's bookings and meetings and payroll. We've said why I think, Mm -hmm. don't think we've talked about why we can't recommend payroll. We can't really recommend payroll. Um, because number one, there's, you have to be in one of those States to use it. Right. Um, and you've just got some other things with it. It's just, it just doesn't seem to be as nearly as good as what you would get with a sure payroll or a paychecks mm-hmm. or an ADP or any of those. Um, there's just, it's just not quite up to snuff. So, you know, Zoho just acquire a payroll company <laughs> in the U S and jump head first into the payroll. It would just be awesome. It would mm-hmm. be awesome. It's the one missing be- link in the finance suite. Really? It's the only thing yes. that you can't really do with Zoho right now. Right. One of, I'll um, say one of very few things that you can't do with the Zoho app right now. And we had a lot of people, they want to leave QuickBooks and they want to come over to, uh, you know, Zoho books, but they're running payroll in QuickBooks, mm-hmm. right? Um, because QuickBooks does have a real national payroll type of service. So anyway, something for them to look at there. And then uh, the, what else do we want to see? Kind of stuff that's left over from la- that we just talked about. We want to see that a true integrated tasking engine. We want to see those workflow triggers and subforms. We want to see lookup fields and CRM. We want to see unified time tracking. And then we'll get into some, and then we want to see those edits. Those are all kind of left over. But in addition, here's kind of a few new things. Yeah. So a handful of new things here with Zoho Voice. Um, the two big ones are just that. We think as of right now, the price probably needs to get bumped down a little bit. It's basically the same as a Ring Central license, except you also have to pay per minute. And so for us, we would love to start recommending Zoho Voice, but it just is a, it's hard to recommend knowing that for the same price, you get unlimited minutes with Ring Central and the integration is just as good. And then this one's not really a need to have, but oh man, it would be great if they could do a power dialer with Zoho Voice. Um, we found a lot of customers need those where, you know, you're basically saying, give me a list of a hundred leads in a custom view, select them all, and then click a button that says start dialing, right? And so now I'm dialing, I'm taking a note, I'm dropping a voicemail, I'm on to the next all just at once. It's not a need to have, but power dialers are so absurdly expensive for so many of these different tools that and they by would the way, have a Ring- killer app if they did that. And, and RingCentral has a power dialer and they have a power dialer that integrates with Zoho. And, but 
they have to set it up for you. And we got a bid this year for one client and they wanted $29,000 mm-hmm. to set up the power dialer. And then you've got um, like phone burner, which is a monthly subscription. And that's like two fifty per user per month. And now we will right. say if you're doing a lot of outbound calling, it is actually worth it to pay for one of those. Like the the increased volume of calls that a rep will be able to place each day should pay for itself as long as your close rate is decent. But it is just a huge cost to turn one of those things on. Yeah. And if you're doing that, you know, if you're a have a big enough call center, the 29 grand is nothing. Um, especially if you're paying for phone burner and you've got a bunch of people because that you pay that 29 grand, then you're just at the basic ring central rate, which is you know around 40, 50 dollars. Um, so that becomes a winner. But uh, I'd love to see Zoho Voice get that. Mm-hmm. And then, Tyler, you really, we, we need this. We need increased API per minute limits in the core apps. Yeah, there, there are a couple here on this list that kind of refer to these backend things. It might be a little less exciting for a lot of our uh, listeners. But throughout 2021, we've seen like an increase in like, I think customer demand and understanding of how beneficial uh, automations can be on the Zoho platform, because Zoho really has provided just an excellent set of tools to be able to go in and just script out these complicated sequences of actions that either happening on an individual record or running schedules where you're hitting, you know, thousands and thousands of records with these updates and, you know, improvements. But we find ourselves bumping into a lot of limits in two key places. One is the API calls per minute, which is capped to 100. Um, You can get 200 records and update 100 records for each API call. So in a scheduled function, it rounds out to about 7,000 records. Um, For larger customers with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of contacts, if you need to run a scheduled function through all of those, it just is going to take forever because of those limits. Um, And then the other would be the daily limits inside of the finance suite. They default to 5,000. You can get them bumped to 7,500 through a chat. And if you just hammer on them, they'll go a little higher, but it can be, it can take way too long to get a lot of those updated. And so they really need to bump that up if they're going to have larger customers really using those applications, because you're going to want to automate them and automations just require credits. And you'd be shocked how fast you'll go through 5,000. Um, so yeah, it would. You're right. Just make it all a cart ordering on that stuff, right? Um, yeah, and I guess if we skip down a little bit, if we do all these in one bulk here, <laughs> and then come back to marketing automation, file size limits and deluge five megabytes. It's just not enough. I mean, a well designed PDF contract can easily be bigger than five megabytes. If you're running the deluge in Creator, you can do fifty. But now you're having to build these automations that are like routing through. You know, you're like sending something to creator as a loading area, which then runs a function. You're just adding a lot of dependencies to get around that limitation. Um, And then as well, like the row limit, you can only run 5,000 rows in one piece of code. And if you're running on five items that all need to run through 500 rows, that's 2,500. So you see how very quickly like that row count can actually be hit. Um, And then lastly, just anything that has an API credit limit, please allow self-service it really can cause some business impact if you run out of credits and you're not able to buy more and you have to go through support. So I get it. There are server constraints throughout COVID. They've grown a lot and it's been hard to build more data centers. They're working on that. But once you've got those data centers in place, please revisit some of these limits um, because it would really take things to the next level if you were a little bit less capped on some of this stuff on the back end. Yeah. And give them a two hour grace period. How's that? Right. (laughs) You ran out of APIs, send them an email, do a pop-up, do something. You're out of APIs. We're going to allow APIs to continue to run for the next two hours, but please purchase more, right? Because shutting it off is brutal. So anyway, I'll kind of go back in here. Uh, We talked about marketing automation ad nauseum, but to take it to the next level, campaigns and marketing automation should be one application. Um, Maybe it's a you know, a, prof- a, a, a pro version, an enterprise version, and an ultimate version, right? But And maybe that just the pro version is going to be campaigns, right? And the enterprise version is most a marketing hub. And, you know, you can have these different things. But if they want to release different versions, do that. But make it one product and get that stuff cleaned up. 
Yeah, um, make it make sense to people. It's just a common question that we have to answer. And the answer right now is just use campaigns, just pretend the other yes. one doesn't exist. But it just, right. it's a clarity thing for customers. Yeah. And then Zoho planned on doing this. They had planned on, I think, building 10 data centers over the last you know couple of years. I think they, they were going to start building them back in 2020. Um, but with COVID, they haven't really been able to build their data centers. And I'm sorry, time's up. <laughs> you got to build more data centers, Zoho. Um, you, you know, we're starting to see more slowdowns on some various things. Honestly, they do a great job. The uptime rate is extremely good, mm-hmm. but that is going to fix a lot of their video issues, their recording issues, their audio yeah. issues, all those kind of things. <laughs> you, you know, you launch all of these things, you really need to, to get that clean. Yeah. And with some of these two, I will say we probably come at them with the bias of a partner in that, like, we really put Zoho through its paces, you know, and as we've continued to grow our strength and development and kind of what we can do and what we can automate, we find ourselves bumping into limits that most people will probably never hit. Right. But it, yeah. so it might be some of our bias applies to these that like, because we just write so much code, these things start to stand out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I think I think once they get that data centers issue solved, I think they'll then kind of circle back on a lot of these other things and see if they can, they can make some adjustments. And lastly, as we end every year with, please integrate Soho Notebook with Soho CRM. (laughs) It'll finally make Brett shut up about this. So please do it. (laughs) Well, you get, you know what? I have faith. I mean, they gave me um, sub forms and email templates. So this will be the year we get that. They've actually talked to us about it. For some reason, they're saying, it's not trivial. Mm-hmm. It seems trivial to me, but they're saying it's not trivial. So we should just we'll build a custom version of Notebook and Creator, and that can definitely be added as a related list. That that would just definitely be done there. All right, Tyler, and one hour and thirty six minutes in, we finally get to the twenty twenty one Zenmi Awards. <laughs> so we, <laughs> this is where we need the soundboard for like the audience dun, applause. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. The Zenmis. Is so that the Zenmi year, we gave ourselves for best Zoho this is partner? The Zenmi we gave ourselves for uh, best partner in North America in 2020. <laughs> I'm going to have another one made up for 2020. No bias no. at all. Just an yeah, honest yeah, assessment, yeah. you know? You know, we made this because I wanted to see what one looked like. I wanted to keep one. Um, so we did that as a joke. But this is what they look. And this is what every product manager in Zoho got and any external got. So we actually make these and we send them to the Zoho team and to other people not at Zoho, who may win an award. Um, It was a big hit last year. So here we go one more time. And uh, let us start off with our favorite new application. The votes are in, Tyler. Any idea? What do you think it is? Did you peek? I don't think I peeked. Um, I think my guess... My guess would probably be Zoho Learn. A lot of people have wanted an LMS for a long time. And I bet you when they got onto that voting page, yep, that one's not a surprise. Zoho Learn was the favorite application, a new application of 2021. And I have to agree with it. Great out of the gate on release day. Solid, man. I mean, just solid. Uh, no bugs. It just was fantastic. So uh, congratulations to the Zoho Learn team. Uh, your trophy will uh, will be on its way. As a matter of fact, I'm going up to Austin on uh, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, and I'm going to uh, meet with uh, Raju, and I'm hoping, um, I'm just going to hand him a whole bunch of these and he can get them over to India. Because last time, that was an adventure. We, we shipped these things. The box got damaged. Oh, man, it was crazy. Uh, and it went during COVID. It was just, oh, uh, Lord. So anyway, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Zoho hand these out this year. So congratulations to the Zoho Learn team. Great job. Yep. And then we had the favorite telephony application. Last year, Twilio won this one, uh, which was kind of a shocker to me mm. um, that a lot of people choose it. Uh, and I will say Twilio... Man, down and dirty, great application. If I know Twilio doesn't want to do this because of the way they're structured, but they, if they would release a native Twilio Chrome extension, game over. You know, for a lot yeah. of companies, it's all they need. Um, so, did they win this year, Tyler? No, they did not. Oh, came around Central. to Ring Central. Makes Ring sense. Central, far and away, got the most votes. I mean, it wasn't even close. Far and away, they got the most votes, and it was uh, 
just uh, so congratulations to Ring Central. I honestly feel like they deserve it. You know, I do too. Um, As so, you said, I mean, we've went the rounds on telephony options, whether it's Jive or Go to Connect or uh, Just Call or any. I mean, we have just gone through so many voice over IP integration, especially you and Skylar digging in, setting them up in a demo account, like <laughs> finding out, yep, this is broken too. And we always find our way back to Ring Central. So, a well deserved we award for them. So, congratulations, Ring Central. And next category was our f- the favorite marketplace application. Um, last year, this went to uh, Catalyst Connect Portal application, mm-hmm. which is an outstanding application. And uh, this year, I also think extremely well deserved. The award goes to Smooth Messenger. Yep, and this is one that's been renamed a couple of times. We've talked about it often. It's uh, a Twilio SMS plugin for the CRM. It's built by Jeremy Nagel over at, I think they've got a couple of different brand names, Nuanced IT, Ethical Technology, a couple of them. Um, basically, it is just the best messaging tool for inside the CRM. Uh, basically, you connect it to a Twilio account. It pulls in all your numbers you, into a module called Twilio Numbers. You assign the owner of each of those numbers as a CRM user. Now they've got access to it. And then in your lead and your contact and your opportunity, you have just like an iMessage style texting interface with that contact or lead. It's just perfect. Um, run all your automations through it and everything. It just doesn't really miss any of those core features of an SMS tool. Yeah, absolutely love Smooth Messenger. Mm-hmm. Just a great, great, great application. So cheap too. Just very cheap. cheap. It's like uh, maybe what is it, 35, 40 bucks a month, and it's flat. It's not based on users. So if you got one not. person, it's expensive. But if you've got 10 or 20, it's like dirt cheap to use this thing. Um yeah, and yeah I, it's just I mean, rock solid. I, yeah, it's a it's a great app. It's cheaper um, than it should be, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so if I go buy now. It's um, yeah, forty an org per month, thirty nine dollars. If you buy it annually, it's two hundred eighty bucks a year for your entire org. Yeah, great, great, great. So you got ten so users. Con- it doesn't get any cheaper than that. Yep. Congratulations to Jeremy and the team over there, um, and they've just never stopped improving that application. So yeah, great stuff. All right, and then this weird did a little different last year. We had categories of applications. What's your favorite application in this category, this category, this category? This year we did it different. Forget the categories. Maybe one category had two things that should have been in there. So we just opened it up. We had all 60 some odd Zoho applications Mm -hmm. uh, on a list. If you were on, if you saw the ballot and it was basically vote for your, you know, what are your top six favorite Zoho applications? Yeah. What we found, what we found last year is basically just that if you ask people what the top sales application in Zoho is, it's going to be CRM. You don't even really need right. to ask that question, right? And so right. we thought it'd be a little more interesting to do it this way this year. Now, yeah, and I, this worked out. So let us start the number six favorite application. Do you have a guess? I have no guesses. I am really happy to see this one slip in work drive. Very nice. Yeah, we've done a yes. lot with WorkDrive this year. I mean, you know, a thing that we seem to be implementing for everyone nowadays is, you know, CRM, magic button to create a proposal and put it in a WorkDrive folder linked to that record. And it's just, it's just beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, it really is. There's so much you can do if you're using, you know, if you got Zoho CRM and, and, you know, it's a reason to move from Google Drive. I mean, there's just so much integration you can it's do. For generous so nice. storage limits too. Yeah, the sharing um, that they, the improvement of sharing, the all of the things they've done, the tagging, the meta tags. I mean, we didn't cover really any of the big work drive stories um, in our roundup this year, but man, every single month we could have had three or four work drive stories in there mm-hmm. because they have just been nonstop development. So, congratulations to the work drive team. Number five, dun, 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 dun. creator, Zoho creator. <laughs> The, yes. bear, the bear of all applications where you start with nothing but can do anything. Uh, Zoho Creator, we didn't talk about it a lot this year, I guess, on the roundup. Um, anyone who doesn't know, it's their low-code application building platform. We like to say it's a medium-code mm-hmm. application platform because really to make that thing work, you're going to have to know at least some basic deluge. But man, there is not much you can't do inside of Creator if you set your mind to it. 
Yeah, great. I mean, we have built, you know, the team has built, Josh in particular, have some massive, massive creator applications for our clients. Um, and we found one- too is, yeah, that you're kind of, what they've been doing a lot of is, you know, using Deluge to interact with HTML, right? And create like dynamic tables for a client portal or whole user interfaces in there based on user roles. And it's just incredible what you can do. Yeah, it's uh, great, great, great stuff. All right. Moving on, number four, and these two, basically four and five were tied, Mm. Um, but number four, Zoho Books, Um, Books. and it's come a long way this year. I mean, I will tell you, Zoho Books sits in our maybe list on our website, and you know, for those of you that aren't familiar, if you go over to Zanata.com and you just click on resources, we break down what we think of the Zoho apps and we say yes, no, maybe. And really the only reason it's sitting in maybe is, just you know, payroll. Just a, really, it's just I a mean, couple of things, right? No major payroll, you know, bank feeds need to be up there. This has kind of gone away. This actually getting better. Update yeah. that. This is, this is much better. Um, and there are a couple other minor things with it. If you're a construction company and you're doing progress billing, you know, it needs to get there. There's some of those things in QuickBooks where they've got like a module for it, I think they call them. And not all of those yeah. modules can be easily replaced within books. Most of them can, but not all of them. But on the whole, if you were to outweigh the benefits to, oh, I have to do a little work around on this. If you are a Zoho One user, you really need to use Zoho Books mm-hmm. because the magic that can happen, yeah. <laughs> the magic from CRM to books or anything, um, the magic we can do with that from invoicing to any, I mean, it's just, it's incredible how tightly mm-hmm. integrated they are and the great things we can do. All right, Tyler. Number three. I'm hoping analytics guess? slips in here somewhere in the top three. Got a guess. You're hoping. I'm hoping. Your wish has been granted. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. I love me some Zoho Analytics, man. Um, no surprise. I think this is one of those applications, and I think that it's really smart that they do this, but they include it on most of the bundles, right? They're emphasizing it inside of the Zoho One interface. It got the embed for analytics where a lot more people, I think, are kind of finding out about it, just how powerful it is. Um, so no surprises that it's in our top three, absolutely great application. And they have just been working so hard on it. I mean, I really think Zoho understands the value of BI and having all of your data in a place that you can report on it like this. And so, yeah, I uh, mean, and this year you actually, it was responsible for our implementation of the year, right? I mean, it was, yeah, we've been using it as a cheat code for external integrations too, and kind of like big bulk jobs. It's like because of those API limits we're talking about earlier, oftentimes we're like creating structured tables there, querying those, and then using them to do CRM actions to save on the API credits. And there's just so much you can do with Zoho Analytics. It's hard to beat. All right. And boy, this one, I was kind of hoping this was going to slip into number one, but the number two application of the year, and man, it is well-deserved goes to Zoho Click. We've been singing his praises all show. We talk about what they did this year. Rock solid application. I mean- Yeah, and just the way it works into everything else in the Zoho ecosystem and how easy it is to kind of work with and use and develop on top of. I mean, it's just, it's great. I don't know what we would do without Click. I mean, I guess we'd probably use Slack, but, you know, just- Yeah, uh, the integration. Yeah, It, it, it really, really, really is. Uh, so congratulations to the product team over at Zoho Click. And lastly, the grand prize goes This one to... may shock you. It's a shocking one. <laughs> it's a shocking. I haven't seen but it, but I know be. it. <laughs> it's got to be. The favorite Zoho application voted by everybody is uh, Zoho CRM. The gateway and of course, truck, I guess we call it. <laughs> the gateway truck. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Tyler, that's it, man. Another year. We brought it in in two hours. I was getting I worried know. we weren't going to do it, but somehow we brought this one in. It's crazy. We actually will have one more show. We'll do a, just a standard CRM Zen show on December 31st. So we'll see everybody there. And we're launching a whole new look and feel. It's got to, we got to, this is going to be our beta test of. Uh, yeah. So if you show up for the show feel. next week, it's going to be interesting. We're using yeah. a new tool. Um, so just understand that we're going to, we're going to do our best. We've been playing with it. The team's really excited. It's going to be awesome. 
but expect that next week will be an interesting show as we kind of play around with it and see what exactly what we can do there. Yes, there'll be some editing to do after the show. I'm sure. but, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you never know. All right, guys, with that, we're going to wrap up another show. If you have any questions or comments, please head over to Zanata.com and drop us a line. On the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, we'd love if you would follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.